Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnitsi. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester one, introduction to networks, and this is chapter five, Ethernet. Chapter five is separated in three sections. We have section 5.1, Ethernet protocol, section 5.2, address resolution protocol, or ARP, and then we move on to section 5.3, local area network switches. Section 5.1, Ethernet protocol. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the operation of Ethernet sublayers, identify the ma major fields of the Ethernet frame, describe the purpose of and characteristics of the Ethernet MAC address. Now, if you remember the sublayers we talked in in chapter four, the data link layer has been sub separated in two sublayers. So, if you remember, we had LLC and MAC sublayer. LLC is 802.2, .2, while MAC is 802.3 Ethernet. So Ethernet, one of the mostly, most widely used local area network technologies, operates in the data link layer and a physical layer. Family of networking technology that are defined in IEEE 802.2 and 802.3 standards. It does support uh, data bandwidth from 10 megabits, to, from megabits per second, 100, 1000, 10,000, 40,000, and now even 100,000 megabits per second, which is 100 Gbps. Ethernet standards define layer two protocols and layer one technologies. Two separate sublayers of the data link layer to operate are logical link control and media access control. Reminder of encapsulation and decapsulation. So for example, if this uh, device, this is a source and this is a destination, has got some data to send from source to destination. This data is called a good put. So the first thing is going to be the application layer is going to identify what kind of data is it. And then we add a TCP header, which is going to add the source destination and source port number and destination port number. Then we have the network layer, which is going to add the IP source address and IP destination address, as well as other information like the TTL and uh, then the data link layer is going to add the he its own header, but as well as uh, the trailer. So when he adds a header, in the header, you can find the fields like destination MAC address, source MAC address, and so on. After he completes all that, then he's going to add the trailer. As the packet is moved on from the source to the gateway, the gateway is going to do, the first thing he's going to do is going to look at the trailer. There has not been any corruption. If he hasn't, then he's going to look at the data link layer, have a look like the MAC address, source, and destination. After that, then it's going to read the IP packet. Where is it going? Find out from the routing table. They need to send it to the neighbor. Build. After it does that, it will build as a source and destination itself. So itself is going to be now on the data link layer as a source. Destination is going to be the neighbor. That's the data link information. This IP packet here doesn't get changed. It doesn't get swapped from the source to the destination. And then the packet will continue or the PDU will continue from the so from every hop like that. And then as it's going through to the end, this the router is going to put itself as a MAC address, his own MAC address and destination MAC address of the de of uh, this destination PC. So I'm just going through the slide so you really remember that at every hop, this information here is getting changed. The data link header is getting changed to its own source and destination IP address. Now, uh, when the PC gets this, uh, it's going to go through that. It's going to remove the trailer. It's going to remove data link the data link header, remove the IP address, uh, IP header, TCP header, HTTP header, and then go through the find the good put. So Ethernet encapsulation, we have LLC will handle the communication between upper and lower layers. It takes the network protocol data and adds the control information to help deliver the packets to the destination. MAC address layer or media access control layer constitutes of the lower sublayers of the data link layer implemented by hardware, typically in the computer network NIC. The two primary responsibilities is data encapsulation and media access control. Ethernet 2 frame fields. Minimum Ethernet frame size is 64 bytes. Anything that uh, goes underneath this minimum size is called the collision frame or runt. Maximum fra Ethernet frame size is 1518 or 1518 bytes. And if it goes above this maximum, then it's called the jumbo or baby 
giant now ethernet 2 frame structure in the field so we have the preamble this is a synchronization start and stop of the frame then we have the destination mac address then the source mac address destination mac address is like for fast switching then we have a source mac address then we have a type for example is it ether, ether ip ipv4 and what type is it and then we have a data the data we can see that it's from 46 bytes up to 1500 bytes and the rest of the bytes to make the minimum and maximum it's your uh, overheads mac or media access control address and hexadecimal now mac addresses they have a physical address as soon as they come out of the production they will have an address this address is burned in so you can't really change it you can spoof it but you can't change it now mac addresses are represented in hexadecimal that you have to remember now we we learned about decimal we learned about binary and then hexadecimal hexadecimal we have same 0 to 9 it's in power 16 so 0 to 9 same as decimal and then we have a b c d e f the digits so decimal in power 10 binary in power 2 and hexadecimal in power 16 mac address uh, layer 2 ethernet mac address are 48 bits and are represented in 12 hexadecimal digits so 48 bits for mac address the ieee requires the vendors to follow these rules must use the vendors assigned oui as the first three bytes so all mac addresses within the same oui must be assigned a unique value in the last three bytes okay so imagine if we if you produce no, me and you we go to company and we are i don't know manufacturing network cards now not if you do manufacture network cards so we need to purchase this area the organization unique identifier for example 00602f this is a cisco mac address they have purchased this they can't use they can't just pick any 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 part and then they have to they can write it this is what they have purchased and then they have start the vendors assigned so you start with the first mac address and then you have every network card you produce is gonna have to be unique so first 24 bits are called your organizational unique identifier so we can look at the mac address on the pc and find out okay what's the what's my mac address and you can find from those six hexadecimal digits you can find that okay what manufacturer has produced that that is 12 uh 12, 24 bits so mac address representation if you go to the windows computer and you type ip config forward slash all is going to show, tell you physical address which physical address you have now there's a few ways you can represent mac addresses you can represent it with dash like in this microsoft is doing it or with the colon or like cisco likes to do you have for the four digits dot another four digits dot another four digit either way it's fine now it's important to remember that it's fine for mac addresses but it's not fine for ipv6 for example addresses they need to present it with you need to represent it with a colon divide them while the ipv4 for example with a dot so but as far as the mac addresses uh, these ones are fine the communication can happen in the ethernet can be a unicast where we send one pc a single pc is sent into a single destination so for example you have a source mac address unicast mac address to source to destination unicast mac address and obviously we put the trade them and this is called a frame or it can be a broadcast if it's a broadcast then we one pc is communicating to all other pcs on the network and then you can see the destination MAC address is all Fs or a multicast address where we send to group instead of to all or just to one so we have a group for example say you have 20 PCs and you can group them group 1 has 1 to 10 group 2 has 11 to 20 and then when you have to send to that group obviously you put the MAC address of the or multicast MAC address always start with 01005E and then the destination group frame processing the NIC with the info, uh, views information to see if the destination MAC address in the frame matches the device physical MAC address stored in RAM so as soon as the device boots up it will store its own MAC address in the RAM so as they get in the frames they check okay well what's the destination MAC address if it's the same as my in RAM, whatever I have in RAM then it's for me or maybe it's a broadcast then it's for me as well if there's no match that the device discards the frame 
If there's a match, the NIC passes the frame up the OSI layers where the D encapsulation process takes place. MAC addresses and IP. MAC addresses, this address does not change. Like we said, it's burned in the address, similar to the name of the person. I guess, I don't know. The name you can change. Uh, you can't change it that easily. But the, the MAC addresses, you can't change them. You can spoof them as well, but you can't really change them because they are burned in information. This is known as the physical address because physically assigned to the host NIC or network interface card. The IP address is similar to the address of a person or home address of the person where he lives based on where the host is actually located. Known as a logical address because assigned logically. Assigned to each host by a network administrator. Both the physical MAC address and logical IP address are required for a computer to communicate just like both the name and the address of the person are required in the letter. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video, 5.2 Address Resolution Protocol or ARP.